wants something better, he probably just don't know how to go get it, and he probably afraid to go get it because he's scared to be judged by the homeboy over here, or a person ain't gonna think he real, a person don't think he a buster because he putting on a, a tie. You know, it's a lot of different things that go through people's head before, because it was a time where, when I first opened my business, I was scared of being judged. Like, dang, they gonna think this, or they gonna think that. These was things I was going through my head. I was scared of failing. I yeah, was scared. It, it wasn't even out. me being scared yeah. of failing. Cause I, I really didn't really mind. I was scared of what people was gonna say when they seen me doing this. So for example, if I wanted to, our nonprofit organization, we got a fundraise to do this. Right. My first event, I wanted to give backpacks out to the kids in the project. So I fundraised with right. Kool-Aid. I right. sold juices. Right. In my head, I'm like, they gonna think I need money for my rent. <laughs> <laughs> they gonna think I can't right. pay my house. Right. I swear yeah. to fucking God, this is the shit that was going through my head. Yeah. Like, they gonna be like, she don't need no, she ain't yeah. gonna give out no backpack. She, she needs to put <coughs> her rent. Why? Because we so caught up around judgments. So we didn't heard these stories before. Yeah. We didn't heard our grandmas yeah. talking yeah. about the shit. We didn't heard our mom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was nervous to yeah. step out and do certain yeah. shit because I was like one of the first people in my generation to open a business or do something mm -hmm. outside the box. Now, I'm... What years in now everybody jumping on that bandwagon, but do you know how how scared as fuck I was to go sell some juice to give my backpack? So imagine that. You go to the park lining up with everybody. Everybody in your park come on, man, we gonna go over here and get down with these girls and you ready to go. When it came to open a business, mm -hmm. your feet no, no, but, but, but I was but guess what? Uh, what I was shocked it's easy. I always tell people when I even me with my nonprofit, it's once you change your life, it, it seems like it becomes harder yeah, than it is before. You, when we was out there game bang, we took what we wanted. It yeah, wasn't no, well, if we wanted something, I'm going to take it. <laughs> if I need something, I'm going to get it. You know, I sold drugs, I did it all. But I, I realized I was, I, still, I was walking with God and holding the devil's hand as well. I let the devil hand go. So it's, I always say people think when you change your life, uh, you know, walking with God, it gets easier, but actually it's harder because now I'm fighting with the devils I ran with, with the devils that didn't like me already. Mm -hmm. and, and like she said, I hear people saying all the time, uh, Sid don't need no help. She got all that money because I'm in a building. I don't have no money. God is sending people my way. You know, he's sending people. And it ain't even the people in the community. It's not the people that, that watch you grow up or that you right. would help you. No. It's, and and it's to, for me, because I've raised so many kids. I've raised, no, I raised so many kids. Without, with help and without help, you know, uh, before I became a foster parent when I was, you know, and it's like, why you would think that all these people would glad, you know, see you change your life and help, but it's, it's like, God always say, and that's who I talk to, that's where all my help comes from, because I've been saying, I ain't got no job, I, I want to do a backpack giveaway, but having Bible study, the pastor say, take God out of the box, don't say you want 40 backpacks, say you want a thousand, you know, so I, I like, you know, I just started doing it, and now my thing is, if I have something, if it's two people, that's who need to be there. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about nobody else. I'm going to do what I have to do, you know. Right. But if it, when I was game man, when I was selling drugs, I, I could get whatever I needed. Easy. If I was game man going to fight, Eric, well, some of the people was right there because I, I wasn't looking behind shit. If I was leaving the pack, I'm going to put my little you know, whatever comes behind me. But you would think that, but no, people don't think that. All right, so let me ask this then. Um, I have. I made a statement that was crazy back in 2007 or 8. I'm talking Ebony Magazine, and I'm working with the young girls in my neighborhood and Inglewood, Inglewood families. And I told the lady, I said, um, I said, yeah, I'm gonna help turn these girls into women. And I ain't think about it till it was in print. They actually print what I said. And I'm reading it. And I'm thinking, man, that's the stupidest shit in the world. <laughs> what would make me think that I could help a girl become a woman? So if I had a girl who was going to the left, she's not right, and things are going on, what are you guys going to put in place right now? What do you guys have? How can I refer these girls so that you ladies can help them become women? Well, you know, my daughter probably is talking. Uh, for stopping violence anyway. So, I mean, coming from the street, I believe that anything that you go through is, I always say experience is the best teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can't tell me nothing if you haven't experienced it. You know, if I if they say single, see a psychiatrist, I'm gonna ask him, was you crazy before? <laughs> if he say no, you don't know these voices inside my damn head, then I don't wanna holler at you. You know, I don't care about the the BAs or the AAs or whatever. I, my thing is experience. So me coming from the streets, um, bringing them in my nonprofit, talking to them, and I've been 
dealing with girls, you know, and I'm sure they have too, you know. I mean, well, I know they both have, you know. Um, so I don't know what. So when you, you say you start talking to them? Yeah, I mean, once um, one reach out, if it was one of the things that like via uh, social media, then just keep communications. I have maybe like 15 young women that I talk to, and they just hit me up here and there, you know, with different little problems. And I take out time to talk to them. If not, then just hit the pavement. I mean, I can go to the hood and just start talking to some of my little young homegirls. They don't they don't even come at me and address me with that blah, blah, blah stuff because I don't get down like that. My energy is not like that. And they respect that. So it's about talking to them. You, at least you got to open that door of communication to start it out. What you going to do is fight them? To be <laughs> no, like for my generation, I feel like, you know, have being open, you know, mm-hmm. letting them know. Just and, and not and being non-judgmental, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you can't be like, why you or you did that, you know, like frowning upon them about certain shit that they did, even though that I didn't do it, I wouldn't, you know, do something like a lot of girls homing. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never been no hoe, but I ain't gonna knock your hustle. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, I gotta have, I gotta make you feel comfortable and vulnerable to come and talk to you. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I feel like where it will start is not being non-judgmental and letting these young girls be vulnerable with people that's gonna guide them in the, in the right direction. I think that's the key important element is not wanting to fix people. But let me just listen to you. Exactly. Let me find out what it is you need. And if one of my own girls tell me she on the street and she going or whatever, to ask her like, what do you need from me? Mm-hmm. What can I do? Mm-hmm. As opposed to being judgmental mm-hmm. and saying, oh, that shit crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So Because you get people to the point where they don't want to talk to you yeah. because right. of how you make them feel or right. say something right. against what they're doing. Or, you know, because a lot of people, some situations, they couldn't help to get in that. You know what I mean? Like being evicted or whatever the case may be, or kids being taken from whatever, however the situation may be. Some people can't help that. You know, so to come and talk to you about it, if you're being, like she say, judgmental, it'll close them off. And then even with that, it may stop them from even talking to anybody else about it because of the feeling and the effect of what somebody else is saying, being judgmental. So, yeah. All right, so let me ask this. Let me go back. Childhood, seven, eight years old. What was going on? What made you go your way? You go your way. You go, you go your way. Was there something that could have been said? Could there have been a person that you could have talked to? What was happening with you? Seven, eight years old when what was going on? What was happening then? Like what you mean, like are you asking like at seven, eight years old? You kinda spoke on it when you was talking about moms, moms right. and so, and stuff like so that. So for me and my experience, um, I was abused. You know, I, I was abused just based off of my mama being drunk or can't find my dad. You know what I'm saying? So for me that's what made the anger. You know, I really was never a bad child. I was never fast. I was never really into boys like that. I just more so was an angry kid. Like I would just fight. I was more of a protector. I'm still like that. I'm a protect. Yeah. If you win the bitch, you win. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I still want to fight, you know, but I, I do it different. You know, I, I got a little, sure. got a little yeah. you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm different now. But at the time, I was seven, eight years old. I was abused as fuck. But I went to private school. One thing about my mom, though, she kept she kept me in the latest and the greatest. You know what I'm saying? On the outside looking in, you wouldn't have never been able to tell that I was abused. I stayed with Jordans. You know, I was I had coach purses before Dooney and birth. You know, my mama arrived still and killed to make sure I was dressed in the latest, but I was abused. She physically abused me. So that's where it came a problem for me growing up. But as I got older, I didn't want to be like her. She was just the person that I used to be like, that's what I'm not gonna do. She was it. She was. She was my role model. As bad as I don't like to say, like, cause we, we we probably still have our little differences or whatever. But she was who I did not want to be. You know what I'm saying? I looked at her like, I won't be that. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what I'm not gonna be. So everything that I heard my mama do, I waited a year or two later. She lost her virginity at 15. I was 18. You know, she had a baby at 16, I was 20. You know what I'm saying? So I tried to do everything that she didn't do. And she was my role model. She was a person that I did not want to be like. I didn't want to move from low income to low income to low income to low income. You know what I'm saying? I moved to my first low income and was like, well, shit, if I get put out here, I'm up for a regular rent. But I was taught to go apply for Section 8. That's what I was taught to do. That's what we taught to do. I didn't want to be that, you know what I'm saying? I want to own a home. I want I want my kids to own property. So I, she, my mama was really my role model. Um, 
everything I did, I, I did not want to be that guy. Seven, eight years old. Seven, eight years old, it was just a lack of communication, a lack of a lot. You know, it was just me just being me, just being uh, out of order in school because I couldn't read up to part with everybody. So it just, my stuff really stemmed from school with being ashamed that I couldn't read. But now that I am an adult, then that was, that was my mama's fault on levels. You know what I'm saying? Because it's your job to make sure that I'm on point with school. So it was just... I was just a bad kid. I was just a tomboy. You know, I'm out there in the, in the grass with the boys, you know, playing football, playing basketball with the boys. I was a tomboy. So anything physical, that's where I was at. Seven, eight years old. I was a straight-A student. <laughs> <laughs> I was a straight-A student. Seven, eight years old. My mama didn't take that. My mama did not play. I was a straight-A student. I, I just, we didn't, like I said, I'm in that era when Game Bang first started. That's how we, it happened. They came over there and they was like, y'all gonna be pyros. But I hid in the house for like the first week, like what the heck? You know, all these people coming over here. And then after that, it's like, shit, I'm tired of staying in the house. So we had to go out there and do what we had to do. Mm -hmm. But seven, eight years old. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say this, I did have a father though. You know, so that's probably what it was. My daddy was always like stood 10 toes down with me. You know what I'm saying? So. With him being there, me kind of having the best of both worlds, you know, because my dad was like a kind of square, you know, stayed in Watts or whatever, but to himself. So I always had the home, the family structure with him. He always kissed me, he always told me he loved me. It was always love shown. And then I had my mama's side that was like, get up, I could curse, you know, I'm fuck you, fuck you, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm turned up on my mama's side. So I had, I went to Catholic school, but I stayed in the hood. So I kind of had best of both worlds. So. For me, it was like, it was like, which way you gonna go, sis? You know what I'm saying? Like, you gonna go right or left, sis? Like, that's probably what it was for me. All right. So listen, I want people to be able to get in touch with you guys. I want young ladies to be able to reach you guys. So, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Snapchat. <laughs> um, uh, ChristianMingle.com. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. How do they, how do they get in touch? Let me start with you, Cynthia, because I know your address by heart. <laughs> 200 North Long Beach That's Boulevard. That's right. Yeah, they can uh, come by 200 North Long Beach Boulevard in the city of Compton. Um, Instagram is SN Angels. Uh, YouTube, I think it's the same thing. Everything is Sylvia Nun Angels, SN Angels. Uh, all right, y'all, they can talk to one of them. They can get in contact with you as well. I didn't get in touch with you. Well, get in touch with me via IG at Mama Boo, M O N A B O O one three two, or you YouTube. You don't for me. <laughs> so, okay, M O M A B O O one three two. One three two. And YouTube at Mama Boo Boo, M O M A B O O B O O. Okay, so on Mama Boo on YouTube, what are you doing? Basically, I just uh, intimate talk with my boo. I bring people to my couch, select the people, and talk about different topics. I mean, I've worked in um, healthcare as far as in work with elders with, um, with Alzheimer's and dementia for 15 years. So I have something on there speaking about, you know, how different little tricks that you can do to, you know, with an elder that has Alzheimer's and dementia and not really get them frustrated or to, like, you know, tone it down for them. Uh, other topics with uh, my daughter, my kids. Um, um, I've had OG Cree on there speaking about his book, Power of Love. Um, just different topics. I go in there and I talk about whatever it is that's on my heart or whatever it is that's on my mind, whatever it made me mad. You know, so, yeah. It's just intimate talk with Mama Boo. Intimate talk with Mama Boo. I have in touch with you. You can find me on Instagram at Mika Means. Um, that's M-I-E-K-A means M-I-E-K-A -E means M-E-A-N-Z. Um, I'm on Facebook, Mika Monique. I don't have no Snapchat. I don't have no YouTube. Um, you got Christian Mingle. You got uh, what's the other one? What they go on? They go on. Uh, I don't have no no dating. No dating. <laughs> right. No dating. None of that. None of that. But that's what y'all have. All right. So listen. I want you guys to leave the audience with something and something that they that I didn't ask you. Something that's on your heart. Something you want to tell the young ladies, the young boys. There's something that we got to get across to them. And maybe I didn't touch on it, so I'll let you go laugh. Start with the you know, you say you're you Okay. You um, like Ice Cube on his track in WA, and he goes first. Okay, that's fine. Right. Um, <laughs> well, 
what I want to say to the community, um, to women, young girls, is, um, you know, try to get into a space where you can find yourself. You know, we don't know who we are. We get in relationships with men. We let the men deter us to not do what we actually enjoy, you know, so for my closing statement, I would say find yourself before you get into a relationship with anybody, any friendships or whatever, you gotta be able to know who you are as a person, what you stand for, what you wanna walk, what you wanna stand ten toes down in, because I can get with you and I can have you doing what I'm doing. But you really don't agree with what I got going on because you don't know yourself yet. You know, I had a lot of communions around me, you know, doing everything the means wanted to do and it's like, sis, that ain't even you. So find yourself, um, Get out of the get out of the feeling like you're being judged. You know what I'm saying? Like, regardless if I say it's wrong, don't mean it don't mean it's right to you. So finding yourself is the main thing that I want to say to any everybody that's out there that's struggling with anything. Is find yourself. Well, what I would like to say, especially to the young girls, is figure out what it is your purpose is. What were you put on this earth for? You know, different people have different skills, talents, and everything. So it's more of let go of the money, see money do. And basically, I believe the stronger people are the ones that can still go to basketball practice, still go to church, or still go to where to book sign or whatever the case is, versus hanging out with the homies or whatever. You're stronger if you can tend to yourself and be real with yourself and do what it is that you enjoy doing versus what you see everybody else doing. So I would say to the young girls to really just, you know, see what it is that it is that you want to do and stay focused on that and stop looking at social media and all this twerking, all this self-inflicted bullshit that's going on is just really creating a habit for us and we're just buying. We're just basically just fighting on a daily basis of what it is that the TV and social media is creating for us to mimic, and which is absolutely disrespectful to ourselves. So basically, find your purpose. Sure. What I like to say to everybody out there, a uh, mind is a terrible thing to waste. Mm -hmm. Quit letting the devil get in your head, making you do something you don't want to do, making it seem like, uh, you know, like they say, a mirage, making it seem like it's money on that end, but not telling you what happened if you go in the store and rob it, not knowing if you're going, the devil don't tell you that, uh, I mean, make you think like if I go in the store and, and take this money, I'm going to get killed, you know, he just make everything look good, but you know, just get your mind together, you know, like they said, social media is, it's not social media, it's the people that's on social media, you know, because that social media make y'all think everybody is a model or actor or Whatever they be saying, you know, just live your life. You know I mean, coronavirus is here. <laughs> just get out here and have some fun, you know. Live your life, see the world, travel, you know. So this right here is part one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have three other young ladies, maybe a month or two, and they're going to be crip late young ladies. I want to have this conversation again, and let's see how we can bring the two sides together, work together, because what I would like, what I would hate to see is any other mother lose their child. Right. So um, that's something that we'll get into too. Uh, are you a mother? Yes. Sir. Mother? Yes. Mother. So, mother. right. I don't, I don't know anybody who would want to, you know, who wants to bury their child. Right. right. So I appreciate you ladies. Thank y'all for being here. Um, that was crazy. Shut your feet. That was so I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for allowing me to interview you. And so you got the information because you call them there. They can move a little quicker. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll just move it back to seven. That way she won't be late. Yeah, I want to give you um, Karnisha. I want Karnisha.